try on Map Bomb and I did it. I went and bought another Inno 3D GeForce GTX 1080 iChill Airboss X4. A bit of a mouthful, it's a bit of a long name for a graphics card. I kind of decided that at some point I'm going to be moving over to 4K gaming and well I needed another 1080 really to get the most out of 4K gaming. So I went and bought another one of those cards. I also bought an EVGA high bandwidth bridge as well to go with it to take advantage of that. I know you can use the other flexible bridges, the SLI bridges. So yeah, I'm going to run this new 1080 with my old 1080, which is exactly the same. It's just a few months older than this one. But, you know, I couldn't resist it. Um, and if you're like me, you see technology and it just it just tells you to buy it. Buy it, buy it, buy it. And I just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't resist and bought it. So yep, yeah, so now I'm the proud owner of two 1080, which is super. So I had to remove my old 980 because I was running the, the you know, 3D 1080 and the 980. I was using 980 as dedicated uh, X, which was completely overkill. I've still got my other old 980 as well. So I've got two 980s sitting in the cupboard, um, which I will be using for another dedicated machine at some point, a rendering machine, uh, one that I'm going to be using to render my YouTube videos and, and for someone else to, to game on at the same time as me, potentially my kids. Um, who knows, who knows, but that's another future project, probably be some kind of workstation with lots of hard disks as well for some storage. That will be in the future. So the installation itself was pretty simple, just took out my old 980 and then I noticed that my cable management on the bottom of the motherboard was pretty terrible. So um, I redid the cable management on the bottom of the motherboard and, and rerouted a few cables differently and made it look a bit smarter. And then I installed the 1080, which is pretty simple. I took off the, uh, there's, two, there's covers, there's these red covers that go on the end uh, near the SLI ports of the you know, 3D um, X4s. There's little red covers. You could get an Allen key supplied with the card itself and that takes off the little screw and then the, the red cover just falls away then. And then you can actually put a, um, a bridge across to connect the two SLI connectors on both cards. You have to take those both off and then put the um, bridge on and it fits fine. Unfortunately, I didn't realize I'd actually bought the wrong bridge. EVGA do four different bridges, so I needed the two slot gap bridge. I know you can use the old SLI bridges, the you know the flexible ones or even the rigid card ones or the LED ones. But I didn't have any LED ones. I did have a rigid card one, but it was a three-way one that we didn't fit. The cards were blocking the, the middle port. So the flexible type connectors, it's been tested and they don't make too much difference if you're not running in what super high resolutions or surround gaming or super high refresh, I think it's 120 hertz or something. There's a nice table um, which I believe is on NVIDIA's website that you can look at to see the difference in the different connectors that you can use on the 10 series of cards. The other HP bridge, the two slot gap HP bridge was going to come the next day so I just decided to wait. It was just a mistake by me when I ordered it. I didn't look closely enough and well, there you go. If you don't look closely enough and you don't research properly enough, then you do buy the wrong stuff. So yeah, so be careful when you're buying these new HP bridges. The actual instructions on the NVIDIA site are different to the EVGA instructions. So um, the ones I went on with the NVIDIA instructions stupidly and I should have looked at EVGA's website themselves, but I didn't and just thought it was the same and it wasn't. Finally, uh, the next day, the HP bridge arrived. And these, these EVGA bridges are absolutely huge, you know. When I, when I saw the four slot gap bridge, I mean, it, it's like that big, absolutely huge. Not a very good representation, but you'll probably see it on the video that's playing. It's absolutely huge, that one. And the two slot gap one was quite big too, which surprised me. So eventually it was all installed and I powered up the machine and on the bottom of the EVGA HP bridge is the little switch which uh, does red, green, blue or white LED selection. It doesn't um, switch between them all, there's no sort of range, it doesn't phase in and out or anything like that or switch between each colour, it's just the static colour for which one you chose and I think I left it on, what was it, red. It's nice to have that feature but at the moment I'm stuck in our spare bedroom and behind me I've got loads of boxes. I'm surrounded by boxes behind this white screen. This is a, well, a photographic screen that's behind me with a vinyl white background on it at the moment and behind that is loads of boxes and to my left and right of me is loads of boxes and I've got my computer in front of me and uh, to the left of me there is my main computer, my beast with the, with the two 1080s in it. 
and I can't even see it, it's on the other side of the desk, so all these flashing lights and all these lovely cards and bits of hardware, I can't see, it's also on the floor because I've got no room in this room. All good things come to those who wait. So yeah, so I bought another 1080. The new one came with a later BIOS revision, a GPU BIOS revision. So what I did is I went to the Tech Power Up website and I'll leave a link in the description below for instructions on how to do this. And I saved the BIOS of the new card. I backed up the old BIOS of the old card anyway and I've saved that to keep it safe just in case. And then I took the BIOS of the new card and I flashed it across to the old card so the old card had the newer version of the BIOS so they're both absolutely identical right down to the BIOS. Once I was happy with the installation, I did a few benchmarks and I'll show those in a moment. Plus I did a modest overclock on both of the cards uh, and I'll show the results for that too. Plus the temperature comparison from idle and underload and overclocked and not overclocked. Sorry, but I haven't got any other cards to test other than the old 980s, but at some point I will have other cards and other makes, I hope. Uh, and some space to actually test it. I've got nowhere to do anything. I have to take my computer downstairs into our front room, which is also a bit of uh, a mess at the moment. So at some point, I will have the space and the ability to do other comparisons with other cards and other hardware, but just not right now. Overall, I was happy with the SLR results. I mean, who wouldn't be, you know, throwing those two 1080s together? And in, in my rig, I mean, I've got a 6900K, which is overclocked. So I increased the overclock recently, actually, to 4.2, which is awesome. It runs really well. It does my rendering and my, my videos incredibly quickly, which is cool. SLI scaling isn't wonderful on the 10 series of cards at the moment. Not really sure why that is, probably because they're still quite new and SLI is kind of a bit specialist. I uploaded a, well I tested 3D Mark and I uploaded a Fire Strike, just the plain Fire Strike uh, score yesterday to the 3D Mark website and I'll add a link to the description below and I got above 26,000 which was nice, it was nice. Overall though I really believe these Eno 3D cars are sorely overlooked, people just don't know what they're missing with them, I mean they're cheaper than most of the other big brand names, but they also perform really really well. If you are in the market for 1080s then please give the uh, Eno 3D range a look. You do yourself a favour by doing so, they are cheaper and they're really good cards. If you haven't seen my other videos on the Inno 3D 1080s, then please have a look. I'll leave some links in the description below so you can check those out. There's other benchmarks and bits and pieces in there too. Thanks for watching and if you like this video, please leave a like. It will really help me immeasurably. And subscribe to for more from me. I'll see you all a little bit later on.